Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Doc Butch, and I'm going to give you a discussion about care of self. Um, this is just a short lecture based on a Medscape study, uh, you know, a widely study used published in Medscape about the burnout that doctors are experiencing. Uh, this goes to our frontliners. So I hope I can give uh, enlightenment to those of you who are watching this. And if you like my lecture, please feel free to subscribe to my channel right there. And uh, you can download this lecture on uh, there, www.docbooch.blogspot.com uh, later on. Okay, so let's get started. Here are some key concepts that we should know. Uh, professional burnout is common among doctors and is considered an occupational hazard that significantly impacts patient care. I will expound that later on. Burnout, let's define it, is a dynamic and uh, is a dynamic and changes along a spectrum depending on both the duration and degree of work-related stress. So in other words, if you feel uh, you're having a burnout, there is an underlying stressor behind it. And people react differently to stress. Uh, as, as Hans Selye would define stress as, as a non-specific response to a demand made upon it. So for many, Burnout starts as, starts as early as the medical school, but appears to be most significant mid-career. Treatment and prevention of professional burnout involves a general well-balanced approach to physical and mental health. So those are some of the, the things that we should consider. Uh, simple but persistent efforts using the formula for good health and other tools are an effective evidence-based approach to achieving wellness. Ito, mindfulness is one form of mind-body medicine that is helpful for, for both burnout prevention and health promotion. So we will be discussing this later on and uh, I hope we can apply it in our day-to-day -day practice as a physician. A regular mind-body practice such as mindfulness can help Physicians work through hard times and avoid being overwhelmed by stress. So first, bakit ito yung topic na napili ko upang i-discuss sa inyo ngayon? Uh, as this is my first attempt to do an online lecture. Well, it is very timely in this situation right now that we are having the COVID crisis. Physicians does not only deal with the stress brought about by this crisis, but also the emotional burden, the, the psychological impact, at marami pang ibang dapat i-consider. Uh, ang, ang isang doktor, no? hindi lamang sa pag-manage o pag-handle nitong mga pasyenteng may COVID or suspected COVID patients, but also uh, the sequelae and the effects that are coming within this, uh, this spectrum. And what can we do to prevent ourselves from having burnout? Because, you know, studies have shown that burnout can lead to a lot of uh, pathology. Later on, I will expound on that. So, let's start with burnout among physicians. Hindi lamang ito applicable sa physicians, but also to nurses, other health workers uh, that are dealing with stress. Uh, corporate people, banking industry, lahat. But for the purpose of this discussion, uh, let me cite the, the study. The study that I will be citing in this discussion talks about burnout among physicians and what can we do with it. So here we go. This is characterized as a loss of emotional, mental, and physical energy caused by continued job-related stress. That's burnout among physicians. Okay? There is a loss of emotional, mental, and physical energy. At ano ang dahilan nun? Continued job-related stress. It results from ongoing, unrelenting work stress without adequate time 
away from professional work duties for rest and recreation. So do you think itong mga team building, rest, recreation, are these things important? Of course, it is important. We need that sometimes. So there is this Medscape National Physician Burnout uh, Depression and Suicide Report uh, 2019. Uh, we gathered, uh, I mean, they gathered 15,069 physicians across 29 plus specialties that met the screening criteria. Yan po ang ating sample size. Uh, the screening requirements includes respondents who were required to practice medicine in the United States. So this study was done in the United States. A survey method, Medscape member physicians were invited to participate in an online survey and the period of the survey started last July 27 through October 16, 2018. Okay, so what did they find in the survey? Uh, according to the ito muna, demographics muna tayo or data, uh, ito yung data ng ating respondents by a specialty. And 13% of that population, ito, the majority, no? uh, coming from our department, uh, the family medicine department. Okay, survey demographics. By gender, 62% are males and 38% are females. And by age, most respondents are coming from the age of 55 to 59 years old. Uh, that's 16% of our population. So, which physician are most burned out? Ito yung result. 54% of those, uh, of the respondents are coming from urology. So they are the most burnt out according to speciality, uh, specialty. Uh, our department, family medicine is here at uh, 48%, quite significant. So you have their urology followed by neurology, then physical medicine and rehab, internal medicine, emergency medicine, and family medicine are, are the top five. Top five uh, specialty areas in medicine that are mostly burned out. Of course, uh, the difference is quite not that quite significant. So as you can see, uh, being a doctor, it is uh, it's already a stressful job. So what contributes most to your burnout? According to their survey, ito po, too many bureaucratic tasks like charting, Paperwork, so that's 59% of the one that contributes our burnout. No, CF4, charting, this, this paperwork that takes our time taking care of the patient. But since we are doing the hospital information system, the upgrades in the requirements of the field health, etc., etc., our time is divided into doing this paperwork requirements. Where should we should be attending the patient, the patient most of the time? Oh, ito, pangalawa, spending too many hours at work. 34% of the respondents answered work schedule. And all the rest um, are contributory to the burnout. Okay, moving on. Are males or females uh, physicians more burnout? So according to the survey, mostly females, 50%, are more burned out, burned out than the male uh, gender. How about work hours? Okay. Ito. How do work hours correlate with burnout? Ayan. 57% uh, answered 71 or more hours see the longer you stay in the hospital the more burnout out you are which physicians are most likely to work long hours alam naman natin to no surgery um they work for so long beyond beyond the uh, normal human so pang ilan tayo dyan ito medyo malayo na family medicine so that's General surgery, followed by urology, surgeology, 
pulmonary medicine, nephrology, and critical care. How about this? Burn out by work setting. See? What gives the most, uh, most contributory factor to the burnout by work setting are the organization itself, the healthcare organization. Uh, how the administration runs the hospital, the policies here, the protocols here. Ito yung malaking contributory factor sa burnout ng ating mga residents or mga physicians. Then, followed by outpatient clinic and then office-based single specialty group practice. Sige, moving on. So, according to Raquel, uh, 2013, the, these are the risk factors for physician burnout. We have here highly driven workaholic professionalistic personality. I mean perfectionistic personality. Sorry about that. Um, being a doctor kasi, we could not afford to commit mistakes. Why? Because if we make mistakes, people die. So we have to be perfectionists. Or I mean, every move that we do should be calculated and scientific based. We could not just simply order laboratories or procedures without a scientific basis for that. Low self-esteem or feeling inadequate are risk factors for burnout. Uh, like they said, going into medical school is not a walk in the park. Well, partly true. It's still a walk in the park, but yun nga lang, Jurassic Park. No? There's a lot of challenges in medicine, starting when you studied medicine in the medical school. If you are a person with low self-esteem or you have this feeling of inadequacy, you will not survive. You will not survive. Why? Because the stressor, I mean, the stresses that the, the, the demand of the profession um, is so high that you need to balance your, your self-esteem. I mean, combat that with a very strong personality or, I mean, just ano ba yun? scale it. Just balance it. If you are a person with a low self-esteem, you will not survive because you will be overwhelmed with the demands of the profession. Yun. What in a term? Continued unbated work stress and long work hours. Uh, risk, risk factor talaga yan sa ating burnout. No? Uh, there should be a work-life balance. But since traditionally, o oh, dapat yan ito ang doktor, 36 hours in the hospital, you know, Things can change. I think maybe things can change. Mm. This COVID thing really uh, give this impact to all of us. We, we have the skeletal duties. Uh, if we can do that, maybe we can do that with even without COVID. Just a suggestion. Ito, poor relationship with colleagues. Nako, everywhere you go, anywhere in the world, what? Ever profession you 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 are you know what business you have there would there will always be professional jealousy no matter how close you are or these people are your friends you treat them as family there will still be jealousy and if you have you know poor relationship with each other that jealousy will turn out into uh, Dumot ba sa Bisaya pa? Anger. It will cause, you know, magsisiraan kayo. Yan. Uh, these are risk factors for burnout. So, choose your circle wisely. Yan. Ito pa. Difficulty resolving home and work relationship conflicts. Yan. May problema ka na sa bahay. Pagdating mo sa hospital, may problema ka na naman. Yan. Every day, you are dealing with problems. So, dapat, you have to be a very strong person. Poor coping skills for stress. Yun. Okay? Let's talk about that a little bit. Stress, it will always be there. And dyan yan, no? It's not the question of stress. I mean, the question is, it's not the presence of stress. It's how you adapt to it or how you respond to stress that matters most. So we have these coping mechanisms 
coping skills. And if there is stress, you have an adequate coping skills, then there is a balance. However, some people do not have that adequate coping skills. Their coping skills fail and then they go into a crisis. Yeah. So, dito tayo nagkakaroon ng mga cases na physicians na nagkakaroon ng mental breakdown. And may mga reports nga ngayon na dahil sa stress ng COVID, may mga doctors na nag-suicide or health workers who took their own lives because they could no longer cope up with the stress. Mm. Lack of time for self-care. Very important. How can you take care of others if you could not take care of yourself? Yeah, that's very basic. A feeling that there is not enough time in the day to complete work tasks. Oh, do you feel like this sometimes? Feeling mo mahaba ang oras, or I mean kulang ang oras to do all the things in one day. Then you may be having a burnout. Okay? Uh, regret of specialty choice. So kung sa simulang simula, sa pool pa lang, mali yung specialty choice mo, but then third year ka na, mahirap nang mag-back out, kaya you're not happy with it. Kaya my advice to those starting, uh, if you want to go into specialty, choose something that you love. You know, Do something that you love. Uh, I was like you before. Uh, I was confused. And to what specialty will I go to? Uh, one time, let me just share this to you. I was in the elevator uh, contemplating what type of you know, specialty I will go to uh, if I become a physician. And then here comes a consultant whom I personally know. Uh, I asked for his advice. And he gave a very, very good advice, unbiased advice and he said to me i remember isa lang tumatak sa akin if you love to do something then do it so again i was confused what do i love to do i love kids i love adults i love to do surgery the confusion <laughs> grew in me and then here's one thing that uh, struck me he said uh, if you want to do everything then go to family medicine so here i am Family medicine it is. Lack of control over clinic schedule or office processes. Uh, yeah, of course, there are things that we could not control. It contributes to your burnout. Rapidly advancing EMR, changing insurance landscape. Yeah, those things I discussed earlier. Increasing bureaucratization of healthcare. Mm, yeah, I don't want to touch on that. I don't want to step on you know, bureaucracy. Kasi baka may matatamaan tayo. But you know what I mean? Complex and challenging patient panels are some of these risk factors for burnout. Okay, let's see the burnout spectrum. Why is it important to discuss about this burnout? Simply because we have this. Okay? This is you right now. If you are well, you, have no, you think you have no problem or you think you can carry your problem, then you are in this spectrum. The wellness, the well-being balance. Uh, according to WHO 1948, uh, they, they define as health as what? A state of complete physical, social, emotional well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Let me repeat that. Health is a state of what? Complete well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So if you think you are healthy, you have this complete well-being dito ka sa spectrum na ito. Okay? And then there is stress. Like I said earlier, stress will always be there. No matter, no matter what, no matter what profession you are in. So stress will always be there. And again, ano yung dapat mong gawin? You cope with it. You cope with the stress. So you do not go into the ill effects of stress or in a mode of crisis. Okay? And then, here comes the burnout. So, kailan ka nagkakaroon ng burnout? Burnout happens when you could not adequately cope with stress. If you could not deal with your stressors, you will develop a burnout. Or in other terms, you are in a crisis. 
Okay? But crisis is self-limiting. Remember this, guys. All of you watching right now, remember this. Crisis is self-limiting. No one stays in crisis forever. So if you're dealing with crisis right now, remember these words exactly. No one stays in crisis forever. All right? So, and then you have there the effects of burnout or crisis. So some people develop substance abuse. Some people go into depression. Some people go into anxiety and suicide. All right? That's possible. So, this, ito yung spectrum ng ating uh, burnout, okay? So, from wellness, uh, well-being, and then there is stress. If you could not cope with it, there is burnout. And then the ill effects of burnout, we have substance abuse, depression, anxiety, worst, suicide. So, let's move on. How do physicians cope with burnout? Yun. Based on the survey, 48% answered that exercise. Exercise. How, excuse me, how many physicians there right now uh, are doing this exercise? You know, release that stress, release that energy, convert that into, you know, physical workout. Uh, some of you may say, ah, wala akong time, I don't have time, I have to, you know, excuses are for losers. Okay? So, exercise, ito, talk with family members or close friends. So, you see, let that steam off your chest. Talking it to someone will help. Okay? So, talk to your family members or to your close friends, those people you trust. But careful about that because, you know, if you just, some people kasi, they use social media to burn out, to let that steam out. No, that's wrong. Social media is never an avenue for releasing your stress. It will be used against you or what? People will, will just judge you. You better talk to someone you trust. Some of the respondents answered, isolate myself from others. Well, being alone uh, can help sometimes. But right now, uh, we almost all of us are isolating because of this quarantine. I hope your isolation is productive to you. Huh? Uh, don't let your stress take over you sleep sleep is the best you know that's for me that's that's the best stress reliever for me listen to music yeah, especially if it's your jam so go ahead some eat junk foods even drinking alcohol releases stress or coping binge eating kaya nga kaya nga tumataba tayo eh ha? kasi yung iba kain ng kain okay Sige, moving on. Do males, uh, the male and female physicians cope with burnout differently? So according to those results earlier, uh, almost the same lang naman ang number. Okay? So men tend to exercise more frequently than females. Uh, all the rest are significant. But take a look at this. Ito, let's highlight that. Okay? Itong... Itong, sorry, let's go back. Okay, this one, uh, isolating. Okay, yeah, is that isolating? There's, uh, okay, ito, ito. Talking with family members or close friends. Oh, 52% of women, okay, ito yung way of coping nila. You need someone to talk, talk it out. Okay? Ito naman dito, exercise. Yung male naman natin, men. Oh, then, work out. Like jogging, basketball, shadow boxing, whatever suits you. Alright? Sige, let's move on. Okay. So, how does depression affect your dealings with colleagues or staff? 47% answered, I am more easily exasperated with staff or peers. 40% uh, answered, I express my frustration in front of staff or peers. My depression does not affect my behavior in the workplace, uh, so on and so forth. Okay. 
to whom have you mentioned thoughts of suicide? Uh, the respondents were also asked about that. And majority, ito, this is very alarming. None of the above. Okay? So majority of our physicians who have thoughts of suicide has no help at all because they tend to ignore it. Isn't that alarming? Mm. And that's why you see some of the articles here. May nagsuicide na doctor dahil na na stress sa COVID. Now we could not always attribute that to COVID, kasi suicide naman is multifactorial, and suicide is always preventable. Number one is talk it out. Eto, if you feel the need to talk to a professional, to a therapist, go talk and seek professional help. Huh? Never mind the stigma. Why? You do something good, you do something bad, people will always have something to say against you or behind your back. So never mind these people. Remember this, you are not born to satisfy the expectations of the society. Okay? You have your own mind, you are the master of yourself. Huh? Tell those haters, haters gonna hate. You know? Sige, proceed tayo. Do you plan to seek help for burnout or depression? So, physicians who are already experiencing burnout or depression, do they plan to seek help? Another alarming answer, see? 64% no and have not sought professional care in the past. That's very, very alarming. Bakit kaya? No? Because maybe as a physician, we are program to attend to others first before we attend to ourselves. Don't forget that you are your own patient. Okay? Your, your, your first patient is yourself. You have to protect yourself. You have to be at your fullest you know, functioning capability before you can take care of others. So if you feel you're having a burnout or depression, come on, guys. Talk it out. Seek professional help. Which physicians are most likely to seek professional help? Ah, ha, surprisingly, psychiatry. Okay, they are the professionals. Hmm. So why do they seek professional help? Because they know. They know that they should not be affected by the stigma. They know that suicide is preventable. They know that depression can be managed. Uh, there, there is, you know, a lot of, there are a lot of management for depression. And psychiatry, public health and preventive medicine. Yeah, you know, prevention is always better than cure. ob pediatrics, pathology. Uh, these are the top five family physicians, I mean, physicians to seek professional help. Look, who ignored it the most? This one, allergy and immunology, 13%. Maybe because they do not really... You know, I don't know. They don't think about that most of the time, okay? Or they are not that stressed, okay? So family medicine, santay uh, dito. There. Yan. Hindi rin, hindi rin sila uh, nagsisik ng professional help. Another question was, why have you not gotten help? Mm, 50%. Symptoms are not severe enough. Okay, so why do they? This is a subjective question. Why have you not gotten help? They think that their symptoms are not severe enough. What is severe? Okay, what is severe? What is enough? Hmm. Maybe they, they fail to recognize that the mood, the mood, uh, affects your function and then you know they, they fail to recognize that the difference between uh, this timic reaction versus the depression itself okay so we have a uh, diagnostic criteria for that uh, we have signs and symptoms like insomnia hypersomnia overeating uh, anorexia persistent sad mood for more than two weeks if you feel these things and if you you know you're hearing voices you are 
you are seeing things that nobody nobody is there then these are symptoms that you must seek professional help all right okay moving on oh, how severe is your burnout another another subjective uh, question from the survey so ito no uh, one ibig sabihin ng one dito it does not interfere with my life and seven it interferes with you know uh, it is so severe that they are thinking of um, uh, leaving medicine okay so uh ito, let's pause okay how do you try to alleviate your burnout to hmm. reduce my work hours yun lang yun no siguro 36 hours is uh, straight duty is not healthy or maybe the 24 hour straight duty is no longer healthy I hope uh, yeah, they can make a good arrangement for that and change my work setting it's all about work spoke with my hospital group administration about productivity pressures okay moving on Ito naman. Which physicians are happiest at work? Ha! 41% for plastic surgeons. They are the happiest. I don't know. Maybe because it pays really good. I don't know. Uh, but they are the happiest. And, you know, the saddest are those at the physical medicine and rehab. Not really the saddest, but the least happy are those from the phys physical medicine and rehabilitation. So, saan naman tayo dito sa PAMED? Yan. Medyo hindi tayo happy ah. Find your happiness. Uh, that's the secret. Okay. So, let's discuss these things. Attributes that protect against burnout. Mm. Healthy temperament and sense of humor. It protects you. Uh, sabi nga nila, laughter is the best medicine. But if you keep laughing without a reason, maybe you need medicine. Self-awareness. Okay? If you are aware of your own strengths and weaknesses, then you can take care of other people very well. That is the therapeutic use of self. Meaningful core values. What are your core values? Ano ang pinaglalaban mo? I mean, para saan ka or kanino ka bumabangon? Um, what do you believe in? What is your motiv What is your motivation? Why, why did you become a doctor? So, for me, I want to take care of other people. I want to help. Char, <laughs> I want to you know, being a doctor for me is personal. It's a personal uh, battle. I don't know what's yours. Okay, optimistic philosophy of life and work. If you think positively, you love your, you know, you love what you're doing and you're doing what you love, then that can protect you against burnout. Non-judgmental and forgiving attitude. Yeah, people commit mistakes. People may offend you uh, intentionally or unintentionally. Just don't mind them you know, and, and forgive those that you can forgive and then don't be affected too much. Attributes that protect against burnout, compassionate and accepting of self and others. What else do we have here? Feeling that one is making a difference in one's work. See, if you think that you are still making a difference, you have a sense of purpose in your work, no matter how hard the demand of the work is, you will not experience a burnout. Why? Because you love what you're doing and you're doing what you love. Healthy boundaries and knowing when to say no or step away. Ito, very, very important. You know, abuse of authority is very, very common in the hospital setting, especially uh, in our setting, Philippine setting. No, meron tayong seniority uh, mentality. Okay? Uh, bureaucracy, ating management. Now, remember, you can say no, especially 
if the task given to you, uh, if you think you are inadequate to do the task or the task given to you may cause harm to your physical self, to your physical sense, to your emotional, to your beliefs, after all of these things, no, you can you can always stay, say no. Know when to say no or step away. Work and life balance with regular restorative time away from work. Yan. Work life balance. This will protect you from having a burnout. Now, if you think the 24 hour schedule is not giving you a balance, then do something about it. All right? Having supportive and caring friends, families, and colleagues, or family members and colleagues. Very, very important yung support system. People who have no support system uh, will most likely experience depression or worse, they commit suicide. Maintaining a balanced lifestyle of healthy diet, regular exercise, and attention to mind-body needs. Yun na yung mindfulness that we will discuss later on. All right, ito na. Mindfulness, okay? Practice of mindfulness can have significant health benefits. That is according to Fortney and Taylor. Uh, helpful also in preventing and treating professional burnout. So it increases awareness. Increase, I mean, an increase in awareness leads to insight, okay? Which in turn leads to increased clarity in making healthy personal choices in any given moment, okay? So a sound mind can give you a sound decision. Um, and then all else will be calculated. So that is very important. You have to practice mindfulness. A study published in American Medical Association concluded that mindfulness addresses burnout by improving mood and emotional stability. What is mindfulness by, mindfulness, by the way? Be mindful about the things within you and those things that surround you. That is mindfulness. Be, be mindful of your own strengths, strengths and weaknesses, of your own emotions, of your failures, of your drives, of your success. Kasi nga, according to Sigmund Freud, the human mind, I mean, personality is, is uh, the topography of the human mind is comparable to that of an iceberg, okay? So when you see an iceberg, you only see a portion of the iceberg that floats. That is the surface. That is the, the conscious mind. That is the now, here and now, okay? That is where the ego lies. Just below your conscious mind is your pre-conscious or your subconscious, wherein... Uh, that is where the morality principle is. That is where your conscience are. That is where, where those inner voices are talking to you, uh, telling you which one is right or wrong. And then the, the deepest part of the iceberg, which probably the biggest part of your personality, is that of the unconscious part of the mind, no? The, the id is there, the pleasure principle is there, the desires, the drives, and the nyan. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is, is having this iceberg as a, a balance uh, with the subconscious in the middle, the unconscious at the base, and the conscious mind at the surface. Okay? Now, people without you know, with, with psychiatric disorders or those who experience psychological trauma have an inverse iceberg structure. And that's why their it goes out into the consciousness. The desires goes out there. The drives goes out there. That's why they commit, you know, these things that a normal person would not commit. Now, I would like to give a, a detailed lecture on that, but that would be for another, another lecture. Okay, um, AAFP journal reports a decrease in professional burnout over the last seven years. Results of a survey of more than 5,900 U.S. physicians indicate that burnout prevalence for most specialties, including family medicine, decreased significantly from 2014 to 2017. You know what's the reason for that? Okay, yung mga na burnout, bakit nag-decrease ang kanilang population? It's either they improve they had mindfulness or they quit, okay? They have quitted their jobs. 
That's why. Okay? The survey also showed that work-life balance satisfaction score rose over the same period. Uh, physicians still reported higher burnout prevalence and lower work-life satisfaction scores compared with the U.S. population at large. That's according to the AAFP journal report. Uh, in the last 